eCancer TV now turns to surgery here at the Lugano meeting of the European Multidisciplinary Conference on Thoracic Oncology. Now, Thoracic Oncology, Professor Gaetano Rocco from Naples, uh, it includes looking at metastases to the lungs from other cancers. Can you tell me what, what you're doing in this area? Because it, it's quite a controversial area. You, you can get some real improvements for your patients, can you? It, uh, actually, we, we can uh, by surgery, and we, t we try to perform surgery as minimally invasive as we can. And the uh, real uh, philosophic uh, uh, principle is to keep the resection as conservative as, as we can in the lung and uh, uh, try to remove as many uh, nodules uh, we find as we can with a, a very minimally invasive approach. Um, uh, there are two major uh, uh, possibilities uh, in terms of technique, even do it open and thoracotomy or by VATS or robotic uh, and whatever we, uh, approach we use, whichever approach we use, we tend to, to then uh, be very precise in uh, excising nodule by saving the uh, remaining lung. And you can use lymphadenectomy or not? That's, that's one of the major controversial issues right now. Uh, um, the lesson learned by, uh, from, from the uh, lung cancer, primary lung cancer, tells us that maybe lymphadenectomy could be an, uh, of advantage. And uh, there is a recent evidence showing that even for metastasis, uh, the same may uh, be true. These patients, though, are quite ill. They have metastatic disease, so how controversial is it to, to, to treat this disease relatively aggressively? Well, the, uh, the idea is that uh, be, besides the attempt to cure in terms of uh, removing as many nodules as we can, um, in patients that, yes, they are ill oncologically, but sometimes they're not ill, Ill, Ill in terms of uh, cardiorespiratory function, so they are um, uh, amenable to, to a surgical treatment. But the real issue is that we can provide tissue for subsequent uh, 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 immunotherapy uh, uh, and or uh, chemotherapy in what we call targeted uh, individualized uh, therapy. Now, what different subtypes of uh, lung metastases are there that would help yeah. guide your therapy? Well, we, we, we deal basically with epithelial, uh, especially colorectal, kidney, uh, um, breast, uh, among the most uh, frequent, and uh, uh, sarcoma. That's the, the main groups of uh, metastasis that we, we will remove. And the uh, five-year survival is uh, slightly better for the epithelial cancers once the primary site is under control. And um, we have uh, the possibility to ensure a 40 to 60% five-year survival for uh, patients with uh, colorectal metast metastasis. Uh, whereas the is uh, slightly lower for patients with uh, osteosarcoma. Uh, for them, the five-year survival, uh, these are usually younger patients, as you know, but uh, the, the five-year survival is around 30%. And what sort of hard data from big studies do you have on the comparison between the survival with this uh, surgery for metastatic disease and without it? And that's exactly the point. Uh, w this is one of the hot topics. Uh, of the moment, we are setting uh, in the surgical world uh, the idea of uh, um, uh, prompting a trial to understand whether uh, the uh, role of surgery is so decisive because patients with pulmonary mets usually, unless the mets are m many, uh, uh, feel completely the lungs do, do not have symptoms. So we need to understand whether surgery really has an impact on survival, like has been shown in, in the literature and uh, uh, whether the surgery can improve symptoms. But as I said, many patients do, do not have symptoms from pulmonary meds. And uh, there are different kinds of approaches. Could you elaborate what they Absolutely. are? Absolutely. Well, the two, the two uh, uh, main approaches is open, traditional uh, surgery, uh, although even the traditional surgery has become less and less invasive as uh, compared to decades ago. And uh, uh, video-assisted uh, surgery, either 
conventional like VATS or robotic, but uh, both can uh, uh, use uh, special instruments inside to perform precise excision of the nodules and uh, so leave as much, as much marenchyma as we need for further treatment or for the patients to be able to survive. Alternatively, you can do it in a minimally invasive way, endoscopically. Endoscopically, yes, it's the VATS, and uh, this is uh, doable because we, uh, we have articulating instruments that into the in, inside the chest allow us, uh, allow us to perform the same maneuvers that we uh, allow from outside. Now, palpation is an issue. Uh, palpation is an issue, uh, but, but uh, the, the, uh, very recently the advancement and the refinement of imaging techniques has, uh, uh, have uh, um, allowed us as surgeons to be able to identify more and more, uh, more, and more mats in a very early uh, f uh, stage. So we know uh, uh, most of the time with an accuracy of 80% how many nodules we find. But uh, there is still a possibility that uh, once you operate a patient with a pulmonary meds, you end up finding more. And this possibility is about 15 and 20 percent. What are the markers that would indicate that you should go for an open procedure? Well, the markers, multiple nodules are uh, usually an indicator for, for uh, uh, an open procedure because we, we want to make sure that uh, uh, um, multiple nodules already uh, prelude to the idea of, of finding even more so. Whereas uh, when you have one uh, nodule only, thoracoscopy is indicated, also because we need to make a diagnosis. It's not uh, uh, set in stone that that nodule is a metastasis from the thoracic cancer. It can be a benign disease or a primary lung cancer. And what about when there are recurrences? Well, that's, that's a really one of the problems that we are facing, and that, that's why studies have been conducted to try to understand how far we have to be from the margin of the tumor we resect in order for this tumor not to come back. Uh, obviously, there are other alternative, like, uh, alternatives like radiofrequency ablation that can help even intraoperatively uh, the surgeon to make sure that the margins are adequate. So you could have a combined approach? Absolutely, yes. Mm. So um, all, all in all, what sort of patients can benefit from this well, approach? Well, the, the patients need to, uh, well, the, the, the fundamental issue is that the primary site is, has to be under control and uh, there, there should be no recurrence of the primary site. Uh, obviously, patients with uh, very long disease-free interval are uh, um, amenable for this treatment uh, with few uh, nodules and uh, small nodules are the ones who really can benefit more. Although the, the prognosticators uh, of survival are increasing day by day with the, the development of a biomolecular uh, um, uh, staging and uh, biomolecular studies, we found every day a way to better specify which ones really will benefit from surgery. Do you need to have a good performance status? Uh, uh, well that, that's mandatory because every time we uh, operate on the chest, uh, performance status and a cardiorespiratory function uh, is the first uh, uh, system that needs to be investigated. So at the end of the day, what proportion of patients, of uh, average patients, can hope to have this procedure? Well, in theory, uh, many. Um, uh, it is difficult to give you percentage because it depends on the histotype and the uh, uh, presence of extrathoracic disease along with the pulmonary meds. But uh, um, it, it, with the idea that uh, cancer is becoming a chronic disease, more and more patients will be uh, subjected to surgery. So you think that life can be extended uh, perhaps um, longer and longer by this sort of procedure? Uh, that's, that's what we intend to do and uh, that's our aim uh, when we apply minimally invasive uh, thoracic surgery to these patients. So to sum up, what would you uh, advise cancer doctors to think about these possibilities? Well, you know, every time there is a, a situation where you have uh, uh, lung nodules in patients with extra thoracic cancer, the, the, there is, especially those cancers who are prone to give pulmonary met metastatic disease, the, the, uh, my advice is to 
consult early a surgeon and see whether, uh, uh, especially if he works in a multidisciplinary setting, whether um, uh, there is a, s a space and room to uh, um, approach this patient surgically. Professor Gaetano Rocco, thank you very much for being on eCancer TV. Thank you.